Hey, hey, y'all. Happy Friday. Welcome to another, another episode of Candid Conversations. I am extremely excited tonight about this particular topic. Um, and I know that there are women out there and some men who need to tap in because y'all need to know some stuff, okay, about us. Okay, mm -hmm. you really need to be tapping in to your mom and them. They need to all go ahead and share this video because we are going to go in tonight. I'm excited to have uh, my sis. She's new to Candy Conversations. I am excited to have her on because she's also a feature for our conference this year here in Michigan. So again, we're talking about tapping into your sensuality. All right, ladies, it is important that we understand the difference between sex and sensuality. Okay, and why it's important. And so I'm so glad to have Brittany on. And again, she'll be featured in our conference. We're talking about intimacy versus chemistry versus intimacy. And we're going to be at the Southfield Marriott on Saturday, March 25th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And it's going to be an amazing event. And we have so many speakers that are going to be touching on several different things. And of course, Brittany is going to be one of our features talking to our single folks. And I, again, I'm so excited about this conversation because it needs to be had. It needs to be had. <laughs> we shy away from sex. I'm not the talk, but everybody doing it. Why is that? That doesn't make any sense. And I know you have stories with clients, I'm sure. You know, of course I cannot share, <laughs> you know, that information, but I know you can write a book for sure. I sure could. <laughs> I sure could. And I'm you're absolutely right. That's the key that you said that you're not talking about it, but everybody's having it. And whether you're even if you're not having it, you're not talking about it. So then when you start having it, you all confused. Like, what am I supposed to do? Or this isn't what I thought it was going to be. So yeah, we need to get into it. Yes. So without further ado, everybody, I'm gonna go ahead and have Brittany go ahead and introduce yourself to the people what you do, where you live. Go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. My name is Brittany Broadus Smith. I'm the founder of the Intimacy Firm. At the Intimacy Firm, I am a Christian sexologist where I work to bridge the gap between the science and scripture of human sexuality. I am the number one Christian sexologist. If you go on Google, don't believe me because my about right now I'm like, here you lie. Go on Google <laughs> right now, put in Christian sexologist. First one that's gonna come up is me. I worked really hard on that SEO to try to get, you know, to get get your girl out there. Amen. Yes. But honestly, what I want to do is my heart is for believers to see God's heart for sex, intimacy, and relationships. I feel like we Christianity have gotten a bad rap for being sexually oppressive, sex negative. And there have been some folks in the name of Jesus who have gotten it wrong. But there are many of us, too, who you see right here today that are doing it right. And so I work in my evangelism, Matthew 20, when it says, go ye therefore, sex ed is the way that I go into auditions. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. See, listen, y'all, I'm not going to just bring anybody to my conference. I'm going to bring people who study to show thyself approved. Come on. Okay. Come Period. On. Who's going to tell us the truth? All right. Because as a relationship coach, I know it's important to have a team of people. I don't know everything, but it's also good for me to research, especially on this topic, because I've had people that came to my first conference and my second conference back in 2018, and they asked me to cover sex, but they didn't say exactly because the word sex is broad. So what is it you want me to talk about? And so I was so glad. I was glad about the pandemic because it allowed me to um, really dig deep and do it myself and also figure out, okay, we got to do this conference. So I'm, I'm not sure when I'm going to do this. I know we're going to stand still right now. And I was able to do my research on speakers who talk about, about sex. And I follow uh, Brittany on Clubhouse. And it's some good on there, y'all. It is some good on Clubhouse. I have not been on there, though, in a minute. I was just about to say, Clubhouse still operating? Yes, they are. 2020 had us in a chokehold. I used to be on Clubhouse. I don't even go hold you. I used to be on Clubhouse till 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. On and off the of stages, in and out of rooms. It was it was bad. It was yeah. bad. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad that I 
got away from it um, so I could refocus. And you just never know who is watching you, who's researching you, who's, again, following you um, and studying just, just to go ahead and hire you. And so I'm so grateful that uh, Brittany said yes to the call because we are really here to help people understand the truth about sex and intimacy. And like you said about the whole the whole relationship piece, that's why we're here. It's so many people, like I said, who are going to be a part of the conference. We have an ST, STI coach, okay, who lives with the STI, okay, herself. And she's also number one and is the coach. And she'll be talking about living with STIs. We also have an OBGYN. I'm so glad I was able to, to close the deal with her. She works for Henry Ford Hospital Medical Group here in Michigan. And I'm so glad that she said yes. So we're going to have some people on the platform really pouring into you all about not the sex ed, but the benefits of sex, the purpose of sex, safe, safe sex, and the lifestyle that I live. And I am a virgin and I'm 35. Y'all pray because it is not easy. And I don't push my agenda. I don't judge nobody because we are all come from different walks of life. But like I said before in our last live, uh, all of my parts work. So just because I'm a virgin or abstinent um, does not mean that I don't feel urges or desires like anybody else. I do. Like there is a misconception about people who are virgins. All right. We are not holding them out. I had to put that out there because people think <laughs> that we are not. We are just like you. OK, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just like you. and unfortunately, though, there are some and I would like to say even by no fault of their I mean, once they get good and grown, some fault of their own. But there's this idea that those who haven't experienced sex are better in some way than others. And they yeah. hold their virginity as like this like social power over them in certain spaces. But yeah, it's like, OK. You ain't never had sex before, but you're a terrible human being. Like, as we talk about, you know, Christianity and purity and all of those things, like, okay, you ain't get none. Amen. You held on. But what do you do for the least of these? Ooh, wee. That, that part yeah. right there. Yeah. And it, not a thing. Not a doggone thing. Yeah. Okay. In the way. Well, we don't yeah. talk about that. Right. And that's not to say that holding yourself for God and not for a person. Is not honorable. It's what God expects for us. Expects for yeah. us. So I, we do honor the fact that you've made that decision. But it's not, you know, a faith not of works, lest any man should boast. Yeah, that part. Because I rarely talk about it. Um, and like I told Lauren, so you guys, Lauren's going to be a part of our conference. He's a, um, the owner of date night apps. So you guys should download that app. It's called the date night app. If you're thinking about going out for Valentine's day. So I was just telling him that, um, I never talk about that up front. If I'm on a date, I feel like as you get to know a person, then certain things come out, you know, sometimes when you're on a date, a man, he might come out and talk about sex first because that's probably his M.O. That just happens. And so you have to be very mindful and, and be very um, attentive to what a man is saying in the beginning of that dating, that date night. You just never know what that man's going to say. And so when I would date certain men, I would date and uh, would go out a few times and I'll start to get to like somebody. OK, I kind of like him. And then as soon as I start liking the guy, then all of a sudden, boom. Here comes the question about sex. I'm like, oh my gosh, like, what am I going to do? Right? So that's how it's like, oh, you got to be very mindful and be careful, you know, and how you present yourself. So I have to be honest. When that question comes out, I'm honest. And mm -hmm. I don't, um, I don't want my time wasted. I don't want to waste his time being respectful. So I yeah. think there is a time to have that talk. I don't think you should come out and say, I'm a virgin or I'm yeah. this. That's, that's scary. Yeah. Don't do that. Don't don't do that. I don't. Yeah. You. And the thing is that don't we don't want to do that because sometimes a lot of folks will lead with that. And, and that's almost like a scarcity mindset. Right. I'm, I've in my experience, they don't really want that or they really try to test me on it. So let me put that up front in like a show and prove kind of way. And that's like mm -hmm. that's a defense mechanism sometimes. And honestly, when you talk, yes, someone should know that about you. but my sexual experience is not of importance 
to you until we're in a space where sex could even be appropriately had if we were to decide. And by that mean for believers, that means until we are at the level where we're moving to where this is a relationship. Yeah, exclusive. Yeah. Right. Because if we're just getting to know each other and I don't even know what school you went to or what your mama do for a living, how many people has been in my bedroom is of no regard to you. I hope y'all hear this. I, I hope y'all hear this. Yes, because even, and I, I think I said this on my Instagram uh, story too, that I may, you know, I'm not bending my rules, but I will say if you're going to be sexually active, I prefer you to be in an exclusive relationship uh, that's that you're in and you're having conversations with your actual partner. That's a whole different level than versus having casual sex or having situationships. Um, there's a different level and different respect, you know, area too. But if you're just out here just being with anybody, like you just said, and you barely know them, that's a problem. You're just giving it up. Now you have these souls starting to have soul ties. And I don't want to go into soul ties. You got to come to the conference <laughs> to get that. But this is so good. We ain't even got started yet. Um, <laughs> so what is sensuality? Sensuality is, is you're experiencing life through your sense. Oh, excuse me. Experiencing life through your senses. It is how you engage with yourself and others and relate to others through your senses and you're at your, in your space through your, what you see, what you hear, what you smell, what you taste, and with your partner, shared experiences through like, you know, dressing up for each other because you like the way each other looks. You all are going out and each of you wear the, that that particular cologne or that particular perfume because you know that that smells good and you're, you all are going to cuddle. And, you know, when you snuggle up against the neck and you got that good, you know, that good perfume and a good smell, it, that's a part of it. The way in which it could be physical touch, the way in which you touch each other, but it's also the type of clothes that you buy and how that feels on your skin and when you're when you're wanting to rest do you get satin pajamas because you like the cool satin on your skin do you get fuzzy pajamas because you like how they feel on your feet like, you know what i'm saying like do you ask the massage therapist to warm up the uh warm up the massage oil or do you get massage oil that warms on its own like when you are get you're giving each other foot massages with whatever within your um your boundaries or what you can manage in that area but sensuality is essentially experiencing life in each other through your senses and we often kind of make hear that word and it feels tantalizing it feels connected to sex but sexuality and sensuality are not the same thing what we enjoy by way of sensuality is part of our sexual script it's part of human sexuality you know as a whole it's part of our sexual development but it's not the sum total of you can experience have a life full of sensuality and never have had sex. You can have a relationship grounded in sensuality. And I would argue that having a healthy sensual life is the foundation for any type of healthy sex life. You in the spirit, because let me tell y'all what the Holy Spirit told me before I got on here. The more sensual you are, the less sexual you will be. And what the Holy Spirit was telling me is that you won't be too quick to just give up your cookies just for anyone. Hmm. I feel like it's more, not necessarily even having sex or not having sex, not the less, less sexual you will be, but more the less sexual you would feel you have to be. It yeah. would, it won't, you won't feel as sexually deprived. That's good. Or without, if you have sensuality in your life. And I posted not long ago, the in my experience, the people who struggle in the area of sex by way of quantity for those who are single as well as those who are married are those who lack sensuality and non sexual sources of pleasure in their lives. Yeah, that's good. In relationships, we are taught, unfortunately, like sometimes verbally, but sometimes just in like, uh, what is it called? Socialization 
that the only way men and women can commune and experience pleasure with each other is sexually. That every touch has to have some type of sexual motivation. And then we love to say, oh, my physical, my love language is physical touch. I need to have it. I need to have it. And so those things can be mutually exclusive. There are people who have a physical touch love language, but do not have a high libido. They are not ipso facto. So sometimes they go together. Sometimes they don't. Mm -hmm. But a physical touch is about skin hunger. It is about our biological need to be touched and how touch and safe touch, non-manipulative touch, touch that you don't always, that doesn't always require uh, reciprocity, right? Touch that serves, Mm -hmm. that feeds our skin hunger. Right, that feeds the the that piece of us that understand that spiritual piece of us that understands we were created in community, and so it's that touch that says you're not alone. That's what mm-hmm. feeds you, right? And people who have love language, the love language is physical touch. If they are only touched for to begin or during a sexual process, they feel deprived and understandably so. Yeah. All, in a relationship, if the only time, I don't care if we have sex seven times a week, if the only time I feel your hand on my body is when you want some, that's a problem. Mm-hmm. I can't get no hug. Yeah. <laughs> Every time you kiss me, I got to bend over. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's men and women alike, right? Men, like, you you see the stereotypes and these tropes of the woman in the kitchen, the man walking past and slapping her butt, or the, one, or the woman being upset that the man walked past without slapping her butt, and all, all those little, like, tickle little check-ins that just says, I see you. Mm-hmm. Men like that, too. Oh, you might want to say that again. Men like that, too. Men like to also feel like you want them there. They don't like, they are they are painted as these hound dogs. But they like to feel like you want to be there as well. You and I know that there are um, single women who are preparing to say this, and married women who say, "I give, a, I give my, I give it to my husband whenever he asks." That's not, that's not the flex you think it is, boo. Uh oh. I never tell him no. Are you telling me every single time your your partner made a bid for some for sex, you was with it? And some people is yes, like we. That's the type of time we on. It's a race to see who's gonna say it first. That exists. But there are times where in real life, in human life, because life be life and you don't feel like it. And every time, mm-hmm. even when you don't feel like it, you be like, here. Nobody wants complying sex. I guarantee you that the sex that you comply with, your partner knows that he's not. He may, even if he, he goes with it, he's not okay with it. Mm-hmm. Ooh. That is so good. That's, that's where sensuality th- comes in. Oh my goodness. And I, and I think for singles, it's important to know how to tap into that before you get into a relationship with someone. Absolutely. Absolutely. Then, yeah. Go ahead. Absolutely. And being able to curate those spaces in your own life, right, with yourself. And as so many of us, and I bet you somebody watching today or will see this, or even will be at the conference that are like, that have this this bucket list or this dream list or have a relationship vision board of all the things they want to do and see and places they want to go when they get in a relationship. Girl, go tonight. Please, listen, take me up on the wing because... Okay, man of God, <laughs> buy it, order it now. You, you know what I'm saying? What I'm saying, like, exp- create the life that you are have been afforded that God has blessed you with. Now, God has blessed you now, not for it to sit on the shelf. Mm-hmm. And when that person comes into your space that wants to uh, join with you in a romantic partnership, they're going to get in line with treating you how you treat you. Mm-hmm. So if you're putting you on your back burner and you so you can get around to it, so are they. That is so good. They see your staying power. They recognize, oh, I ain't got to move as quick. She's patient. He's patient. Mm-hmm. But be patient with people trying to build a business and learn a skill. Not patient with people seeing you for who you are and your worth and your value. Because right now you've told you, wait on it. I get to you when I get to you. Mm. I get to you when you're in a better place. So by waiting to do certain things until you have a relationship, you're telling yourself that you're not, there's a set of things that you're not worthy of or that you don't have access to 
until you're in a better relationship state. So when if so facto, you're saying partnered is better than single. And that is not the case. <laughs> no. There's beauty because, in singleness. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. And outside of you know, if for the believers, outside of sex, what else can't you do? I mean, there may be children, but also there, I mean, yeah. <laughs> you can adopt, you can foster. Mm-hmm. You got nieces and nephews, you better be a big big brother, big sister. If you need to get the the parental spirit out somewhere. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, if mm-hmm. you're up in age, freeze your consider find a way. If we pray the Lord send financial, that I'm saying this as if it's easy for everybody, and I know that it's not. You know, freeze your eggs and move like the things that move. We like to say Jesus plus nothing. We like to say we want what God has for us, but the way we lament and we almost try to emotionally bully God into giving us what we want. And I'm saying that as someone who I'm currently, I'm on a 21 day consecration right now with my church. And I told God, I just want to know you. I don't want nothing else, but (laughs) to know you. Yeah. Right. I don't, I want to know you for who you truly are. I want to know and learn your character. I know what you can do. And I know what happens or what my thoughts are for when you are upset. But I want to yeah. know who you are. Yeah. And so, and I taught a class, um, a Bible study yesterday, and we looked at uh, Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, mm-hmm. right? And all other things will be added. That all other things piece as sing- for singles, that is so crucial. We talked about worry, the worry that, that's unbecoming of a believer that really is situated in our in our singleness. You got people who will believe God and pray fire down from heaven for an illness, for a lost, a lost loved one who we know God gonna save them for a job, but it's in our singleness, we gotta get our hands in it. And we sit around waiting to experience things that we could very well do outside of finances. Cause we want to, in all things, we want to be good stewards, mm-hmm. you know, but if you love fresh flowers and you're if your house has not a fresh flower in sight because nobody bought them for you, Uh-oh. do you like fresh flowers or do you like to be able to say that somebody bought you flowers? That facts. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's real. Okay. You want the, 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 the carnations or the clout? The roses or the recognition, uh, people of God. But that's and this is not a beat up session. This is really from one single person to the next. I've been I've been married, I've been on both sides. So for anybody who's I've been there and all the things, right? And this is an admonishment, a rallying cry. Y'all, you know, the, the people of God love Sarah Jakes. Girl, stand up. What'd she say? Girl, stand up. Yes. Man of God, stand up. Yes. Let's move. Let is, let's reclaim this season for us. Because we say singleness is a gift. We say it's beautiful. We say all the things. But do we really believe it? Do we trust him at his word enough to move and trust that he got all and all other things will be added unto it. Or realize the fact that we not, not every single person is going to see matrimony before his return. You better come on. That is the truth. Some of us are not called to um, the ministry of marriage. Mm-hmm. Some and of we, us are called yeah. to the lifestyle of singleness. And you have to identify which one you are. And you know what's the I problem? I mean, and I think it's safe to say that if you if you itching and scratching and burning in your in your loins, that you don't have the ministry of singleness. We know you don't. So then that by that means that's you know he's gonna send it. Yeah. Oh he's gonna send it your way. You just gotta do you take him as word. Now, then, now here's the thing: God ain't promised you no husband, God ain't promised you no wife. He ain't never that's not nowhere in scripture. That ain't nowhere in scripture. That's he right. Promise you that. Marriage is a choice, right? But it's right. okay to want these things. It's okay to plead for these things. It's okay to, to spend time in your war room or wherever you at saying, God, this is the desire of my heart. 
But when the scripture says that God will give us the desires of our heart, meaning he will place them there. That's so good. So we want our prayer to be, God, give me what you have for me. And we want to make sure that we're not praying that God will, that God's will aligns with ours. But we, we align, Lord, make me, okay, hum, humble me enough so that my will will match up to yours. Yes. And that in the moments, if it doesn't, I will praise you anyhow. Ooh, that's being content, y'all. Okay. <laughs> you got to be content in your singleness. Okay, you know, and all things. Be, you know, all things. Yep. And I, I was thinking about something that one of my business partners said to me. We were talking in conversation about a year ago, a year or so ago. And he was saying that, you know, God doesn't withhold no good thing from us. And I just thought about what you said earlier about, sis, you got a bucket list. He's yep. not withholding any of those those things on your list. You just got to take all. a step. You might even find a man of your dreams. Why are you outliving your out. life? Okay. Your, oh, my God. Come on, Brittany. I guarantee you. Now, we've heard stories, but I guarantee you that man ain't finna deliver your mail. No. The likelihood no. that your Amazon man <laughs> Amazon. or your Amazon woman is the person of your dreams is possible. <laughs> but right. you know, one of the, uh, uh, Jennifer Trotter, she says, I um, um, on Clubhouse, she said, you got to be found being fine. And that has stuck with me so, so much good. because we love, you know, he who find of a wife, find of a good thing. So women are, are like, don't want to pursue and you don't have to, but you still need to make your request known, right? You still need yeah. to show that you are even interested and in finding yourself in places in spaces with people who you may get along with. So that means going to, um, I, now this she said, let me stop by the, I mean, the Amazon man might be, I ain't that old. Right. Don't, 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 he might like that. Don't. He might be. But the thing is that, you know, I had somebody, I was teaching yesterday and somebody said, why don't people ask for your phone number anymore? Uh, like do, because you know, at this day and age, you never know with people, right? So yes. does he, have you made your, like, have you shown yourself friendly? Have you showed yourself available? Girl. Like, you know what no. I'm saying? And that's not like the same conversation. Oh, smile. Like, it's not that. Like, I'm not telling the people need to smile. But like, if every time someone say good morning, I, uh, I'm all right. No, thank you. See you. For real. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I, so it's just, I think that there are ways, right? And I'm not suggesting, I think we were talking about, like, people were talking about, men were like giving suggestions to women um, on where they can go to meet eligible, like, you know, and people were saying, like, the cigar bar, sports bars during, you know, big games, like, you know, this is Super Bowl Sunday. Mm -hmm. Somebody, mm -hmm. some restaurant with a TV is going to have some people there. But here's the thing. Don't go to the sports bar, sit around the TV in your sweatpants and sweatsuit that you just bought on the way there and can't rub two positions together, don't know a foul from a first down <laughs> because now you're being disingenuous, right? So mm -hmm. let's. I, won't, I have. I listen. The Eagles are in the football thing that's coming up. What is it? The Super Bowl. Super Bowl. I know nothing about football. I lived with the with he. If he could in his head, he was the Eagles coach, and I lived with that man for ten years. Don't know boo about football, right? But if I were to go to a sports bar today, I'm going there to rep Philadelphia because that's where I'm from. I know nothing about what's going on on the TV. I'm going to be clear that I'm not going, go, don't know what's going on on TV. But if the man of God seems interested, I'm going to be like, I don't know what's happening here. Can you teach me? Take notes, y'all. Okay. I'm not going to pretend like, let's go. I'm not going to do that. Because then when he wants to take you on a world tour to all the football games and you sitting outside in Massachusetts in two degree weather, at the football, now what? Now look what you done got yourself into. Uh -huh. You got asthma, bronchitis, and you in a cigar bar about to die. Now we're not suggesting that. Okay? But no. do you like to golf? Go golfing. Do you like anime? Go to Comic-Con. Do the things. I know that's not what we're here to talk about. But. Yeah, I know. This is going to happen at the conference. Y'all need to be at the conference. You know, here's another part. We don't like spending time by ourselves. I've, yeah. I have I have dealt with a lot of women 
who do not know how to really be by themselves. They got their kids with them. That's not being by yourself, going to the movies with your kids. Be Go by yourself. Yeah. yeah. Ain't yeah. no way going to talk to you if yeah. you got kids. <laughs> I mean, and they may. And, even, with, and even in there, like, you will want, if a man is uncomfortable being around you, like, there are one thing that he may not talk to you or approach you because he's being respectful because you're with your kids. And I appreciate that because I I have two boys and if somebody tried to, Caden and Carter are absolutely going to shut that down. If if somebody <laughs> tried to talk to me and we out at the park or something, Caden is, I could feel him burning a hole in my neck. My oldest like, mom, who is that? You know him, he's 12. You know oh. him, who he, like, I walk past him, I got on tights and his men nearby, he walks behind me like he my man because he don't want to look at my butt. So we're there. So I get that, but even in single moms, because as a single mom, to say like, oh, you know, get out there, lead the kids, begin, be intentional about what you want, right? There are mom groups, there are um, opportunities where you can. There are dating apps for single parents. There are there are ways. Like if you here's a, if you want to find an excuse, you will. That that's, that's what it is. And some people have an easier time. Is it easier for a, a woman with disposable income, no children, her own home, a work from home job to get out there and do things and find people? Sure. Sure. Is it easier for a man who owns his own business, who who doesn't have any kids or has his own kids to come and go? Is he? Sure. Mm-hmm. But if you want it, we make time for what we make time for. And it really got to begin to ask yourself, is this really what you want? So is this good. really what you want? Or what you feel you're supposed to have? And I had that. That's a hard conversation I had to have with myself. I was. I told myself a month ago, like, oh, I'm ready to get out there. Get Got out there and came right back. <laughs> I came right back. I came right. I came immediately back. I went and I came immediately Immediately back. Immediately back. My, even my sister was like, yeah, no, we're not going to do this anymore. And yeah, because it's just not. I was auditing a dating app. And I was like, well, I can't audit it without really getting a full experience and work on helping my clients work through it. So let me see what this is all about. It was very good. I did not like it. And I, but beyond that, I realized that because I'm not on the there's pee in a dating pool. I'm not on that train. Mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm not on that train. I, mm-hmm. if, if, there, if there's pee where you are, you need to check the source. Yeah. Okay. Respectfully. And I realized that I was peeing in my own dating pool because I had these unrealistic expectations where I wanted a partnership. I didn't even want a partnership. I was projecting like I wanted or promoting like I wanted partnerships, but I wanted somebody to serve me. I want you to, I want you to call me all the time, text me back quickly, be there when I want to see you, but also don't ask me to do nothing. I can go all day with not texting you because I'm busy, but you better not. If mm-hmm. I if I will make a rain, I will when my when I don't have my children, we can do stuff. But when I have my kids, don't ask me. And it was mm-hmm. being and I, and I told myself I was setting a boundary. I wasn't setting a boundary. I was being mm-hmm. selfish, and I realized that I was like, I want somebody to dote on me. I want attention. I'm tired of sleeping in the bed by myself. I do not, I cannot afford mentally, physically, timely, I don't even know if that's the word, or emotionally, Is it or I can't afford a relationship right now. I cannot, mm-hmm. I do not have it to give. I do not have it to give. And I had to admit that. So I kindly removed, uh, finished that contract, removed myself off the app. And you know, all of my, now my sister has to give me all my attention, all that attention. She, you know. That's just what it is. Ain't that right, sister? <laughs> she, like <laughs> she said no. <laughs> but also, when I say sister, I met somebody, she was like, absolutely not, Brittany, because I don't feel like it. Yeah, like the people in your life will tell you. You know who's a good barometer or whether you're ready for a relationship or not? The people closest to so you. Check your call log. The people that you talk that's on your call log the most is the people who will be able to tell you whether you're ready for a relationship or not. Mm-hmm. Y'all better hear me. this. Some this some good stuff, y'all. Listen, I ain't gotta say nothing. Listen, I, she telling the stuff. Some of the things she's saying out of my mouth. I'm like, I ain't gotta say nothing. She is telling the truth, y'all. Mm-hmm. I, but I like the I love the fact that you just sat here and said, told us your your you didn't have you had 
expectations, but they're unrealistic. Mm-hmm. For, and it was selfish. I and they're one sided. Yeah. One sided. That's how most women act today is actually worse than what you what you said really some some women but i don't go into that but i like a lot of fact that you you shared that because you have to really be aware of what you're doing to yourself what what's causing me to be selfish in this season we're not taking that time and i was just talking to my hairdresser i said we live in a selfish generation we do. It's so much talk about relationships right now. It's kind of getting on my nerves because we are not taking the time to deal with us, ourselves, our human yeah. in the mirror yeah. every day. What are you doing to fix you so that you yeah. are more of an asset to yourself so that you can become an asset for somebody else? Yeah. That's yeah. what it boils, boils down to. This is why we are having the relationship conference because we are talking about the essential things that you need concerning you. It's not about being with a man. We are not a dating service. All right. We, we, we really attract married couples to help them stay together, but mm-hmm. single people, you got to worry about you, mm-hmm. not in a selfish manner, but mm-hmm. in a manner to become healthy. Yeah. Yeah. So and you, what, and what you're doing is establishing priority standards, yeah. boundaries, leaning into your preferences when possible, you know, growing through, like aligning your preferences with where you are maturity wise or recognizing that what you, the preference that you have is an indication of where you are maturity wise. Yeah. And it is one of those things, again, God sets the blueprint for how well he loves us. He tells us to present our body as a living sacrifice, right? And present it meaning like, oh, here, God, I give this to you, right? And if we Mm -hmm. see how God feels about sacrifices, we saw the difference between Cain's sacrifice and Abel's sacrifice, right? So there is a way that you show up to God, Mm -hmm. right? That's not calling for perfection, but that means you put the time and care and attention into presenting your body as a living sacrifice, right? You can't serve a God with a body that you don't know because mm-hmm. then that's not obedience. That's ignorance because you're just like, oh, here, right? I, I, don't, I don't know what this is here, right? So how, and in that same way, it's not a sacrifice if you don't care about it. <laughs> you need to say that part again. <laughs> It's not a sacrifice if you don't care about it. If you got something on your plate that come in a platter and somebody come past and be like, can I have can I have some of that okra? Sure. I, huh. And you don't feel no ways tired about it, huh? You got this okra. Now you ask me for my baked macaroni and cheese or my last piece of fish. That... <laughs> you ain't getting that. Okay. Tell me a but if you had, if you regard this body well, if you trust, if you love it, you to know what it's capable of. Because that's that really we really want to talk about it. This post marital abstinence, that's really when it became a sacrifice. Because that first round premarital, I didn't I didn't know what I had. Didn't too much. I didn't necessarily not like myself or not like my body. I was indifferent. I did I didn't regard it at all, let alone badly. Now. She's a bad mamma jamma. And I know what she's capable of. Mm-hmm. And not and so me giving this to God, I'm this is me doing my big one. <laughs> okay. Uh-huh. And uh-huh. I'm the worst. Why I'm following. This here is obedience. Yes. Oh my Lord. Listen, you're doing the work. This is why I have her a part of the conference. You have somebody in the flesh, it's on the screen, but she's a living example. Okay. Right. I just I, I, I love it. I cannot wait to see you in person. Listen, yes, y'all need to make sure if y'all in Detroit, y'all need to be at the uh, Marriott Southfield on Saturday, March 25th. If you're on Instagram or if you're on um Instagram or on Facebook, the link to my website is on both pages. You guys can go over to www.peacebeaks.com and to register for the conference. And if you want to do a staycation, because I am not mad at you, again, single ladies, do something for yourself. 
Why are you trying to wait to go on a staycation with a man? Go by yourself. You need to. <laughs> it's, it's a beautiful thing. I did my first staycation last year. Beautiful experience. And I went to see um, Eric Benet. He is the bomb in, in person. Oh, my gosh. So it was a great experience. I didn't have nobody with me. I was by myself. And people were looking around. And I was dressed up and everything. And, you know, just watching me, I'm like, why are people looking at me all weird? I'm having a good time singing and everything. Yeah. You have to know how to have enjoy your own space. If you cannot do that, why should a man enjoy you? Yeah. Yeah. How? How can he if you cannot enjoy your own space? So y'all need to come on to this conference. Um, you can we have a, a discount for those who are going to stay at the hotel with us in Southfield. Again, it's going to be Saturday, March 25th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And of course, Brittany is one of our featured guests. You guys do not want to miss it. If you are in uh, Philadelphia, if you're in Maryland, wherever you are, <laughs> you need to get you a ticket and get to Michigan, okay, for this amazing weekend. I am so excited. Um, we have went over time. I do want to ask this question. I knew it was going to happen. I kind of want to go into it like I really don't, but I want to give people what I did say I was going to give them when it came to masturbation. What is the misconception about masturbation? So, okay. It's a number of them, but here's what I'll say. Here's what I, my position or what I feel the mind of believers should be as it relates to masturbation, even really non-believers. Come on. First of all, with the word itself, masturbation is very, very charged. And so people hear it and automatically there's like this polarized, they're either team yes or team absolutely not. Right. And as a believer, the first and foremost, there is scripturally, there is no one set scripture that says thou shalt not masturbate. Can but you that, say that again? There is no one set scripture that says thou shalt not masturbate. And the scripture that in Genesis with Onan was spilling the seed and things of that nature, that was not about masturbation. We know that to be true. We also know that the, the bib, what we perceive to be biblical silence of a thing does not mean um, does not mean that we can just go and do whatever we want to do. Because it, the script, the Bible doesn't talk about it, so let's just go, right? What I would say for single folks who are abstaining and are believers, we decided that we're going to take the, the posture of abstinence. And so we decided that, God, you're going to keep me. And if you're saying to yourself, I'm going to masturbate, that's how I'm going to get through abstinence, then is God keeping you or are you keeping? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Then there's the issue of when you masturbate, do you feel terrible afterwards? If so, why are you doing things that make you feel bad? Right. Then if you don't feel bad afterwards, what are you thinking about during? Because while the Bible may not be silent on masturbation, we may, if you spend so much in making an idol out of the letter of the of the word and miss the spirit of the word, you can still be in error. Yeah. And so he may not talk about masturbation specifically, but he talks about lust. He talks about idolatry. He talks about covetousness, right? He talks about depending on people or putting other people before God, right? Mm -hmm. And so if you bore, if you say, oh, I, don't, I can watch the masturbation, and I've said it before, I don't even need to think about it, but I can watch cartoons and masturbate, right? But I found myself in a place, and this, that's, I've never said this out loud, but I would be bored and then I would find myself doing it because I wasn't convicted about it. So I would be bored and I'd do it. That's I'd good. be sad and I would do it. I'd be sleepy and it would help me sleep. And now one point that I say, I'm bored. I have some free time. Let me read. Read my word. Let me pray. I'm restless. I can't sleep. I'm stressed. I wanted that dopamine hit. You know, I wanted that endorphins, but I didn't say, you know what, God? Let me give this worry to you. I said, don't worry about it. I'll take care of myself because I realized that I would orgasm, I would be asleep, and it was if my problems would would disappear, and you know, until the next day. Because we know as mm -hmm. good as orgasms feel, they don't solve no problem. 
And it was at that a moment where I was like, you know what? I didn't feel no conviction about this, but let me see if it because I've convinced myself that it's not a problem or that I genuinely don't feel this way. And if I genuinely don't feel this way, then me putting it down shouldn't be a thing. And that first two weeks, I was like, oh, this might have had a little bit of more hold on me than I thought. Mm. And not a hold in like an addictive way or any of that, but really what it was, what God showed me immediately was that you have taken matters into your own hands, literally, but you've taken matters in your own hand. Where do I fit? Yeah. Where so do good. I fit? So good. And I find that many of us who, like my f- colleagues in the sexology field will say, you know, masturbation is good. It teaches you what's pleasurable and all of that. And I even talk about there's a difference between exploring your body and learning your body and self-pleasuring for the purposes of orgasm, and, you know, and all those things. It's like, you know, body exploration begins in the womb. There are sonograms of babies touching themselves and things like that. It just, it happens because our bodies have nerve nerve endings and feelings and receptors that feel good that's just what it is Mm -hmm. but again it's about that heart posture and it's the motive behind it so it's hard to cast masturbation completely Mm -hmm. into the ground because then when you get into marriage it's a positive tool in creating a mutual masturbation is a great tool in curating a healthy sex life and so it's hard to cast it out all the way but i i will land it here Motive and mindset makes all of the difference. And some people say, well, you ain't, you didn't, you didn't make a decision because it's not for honestly, it's not a decision for me to make. But in my experience, personally and professionally, these are the questions that I ask that make me see at the end of the day why we need to do it. Yes. Oh my goodness. I love this. Listen, y'all need to be coming to this conference because I know I'm going to get so many people who have questions about this. This is, listen, this conversation is not an easy conversation for a lot of people and that is okay. There are things that a lot of us do, do not know, did not know, and you can utilize this. If something does not apply to you, hey, it's just like re- going to church and, and the pastor preach a message and it's not for you out of respect. Hey, we there to support. So because somebody out here needs this message and that's why we are here tonight. And so I want you to take away whatever it is that you know you need, take that because there are so many people who do not know what safe sex is, what sensuality is, what intimacy is, what chemistry is, what a healthy relationship looks like. Mm -hmm. Because we all were born in sin, shaped in iniquity. We know what toxicity looks like. We celebrate that. We indulge in that. But we do not want to indulge in knowledge and take the time to be patient with ourselves to receive the purification that God is trying to downpour into us. God has sending people our way. He sent Brittany. He has sent so many speakers to my conference to be an asset to you all. And that's why we are here tonight, here to pour into you all, give you guys some insight of what's going to be taking place during our conference. So our prayer is that tonight someone received something because it was so much that was said. And if you have questions, come to the conference because we're going to be answering a whole lot of things, sharing our experiences. We're going to have an amazing time. So is there anything else that you um, wanted to share with anybody or any last words of encouragement? Come to the conference. <laughs> Buy <laughs> whatever. You come? Yeah, come. They should come because you owe it, especially for the single people who are the ones that are going to be in my session. You owe this to yourself. It is going to be one of the greatest investments that you could make in your intimate future. Honestly, and this is one of those things, if you're deciding, if anything, I'll put it at this, if anything regarding a romantic relationship is on your vision board, this is your sign to to come so that you can, so that your vision board can come to life, this piece of it, yeah, come to this conference. Because I'm going to have my, my good notebook ready, okay? Yeah, okay. I'm right now. Praise okay. God. <laughs> I am here to learn, okay? I, God gave me the vision, but guess what? There are things that I'm also still learning. When I put this 
conference together back in 2018, I was learning a lot from the speakers and the audience. And that's the beautiful thing about just watching everything unfold and watching people begin to just share and pour out. That's how we're able to glean from each other. And you know, the single folks learn from the married folks and the married folks learn from the single panel. Like we gotta be, be willing to be open to receive information that you never received before, even in your youth. Talk to my older folks now. Like there are just some things that you did not get and that's okay. We are not, we are not born to know everything. We are born to evolve over time. That's what God put us on this earth for. Everything we do is a process. I want you all to learn, single folks and married folks, become more patient with yourself. Give yourself more grace in this season concerning yourself and how you become an asset to yourself and to the people that are around you. So again, thank you all for being here tonight. Next week, we're going deeper. <laughs> we're talking about sexual trauma. So a lot of the things that may be taboo to you, it could be because there's some sexual trauma there's some molestation. There's some things that has happened to you. And I have my trauma coach who's going to be on next week. And we're going to dive deeper into this. We're talking, again, we're, there are people on social media talking about sex and all that. But they're not talking about things that are keeping people from experiencing true chemistry and intimacy beyond the bedroom. Because of a lot of things dealing with trauma. From our childhood. We're going deep next week. So make sure you guys tune in again right here on YouTube and on Facebook Live. Um, that's going to be February the 17th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Again, I am Shed Tanique Langston. Um, Brittany, where can the people follow you? Absolutely. As you see right on the screen, I, don't, I think it's showing up on the screen. Um, yeah. At the Intimacy Firm on everything. Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, at the Intimacy Firm. My website, www.theintimacyfirm.com. All right. Well, there y'all have it. Thank you again so much for tuning in. Happy Valentine's Day in advance. And I'll talk to you all in my next video.